Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Got a replay for you today on the Zeta Wonder. This is a 5 versus 5 map, a modified version of Wonder. So what's different? Well, we have plateaus out to the sides. So it's not exactly like Open Wonder, but we do have a bit more territory to deal with. An extra wide stretch of space in the middle here. We've got a bunch of T3 Rex bricks and loyalists and titans and percivals and all manner of things in the middle to reclaim. And yeah, pretty standard starting slots, about the same amount of mechs as a typical Wonder game has. So, I don't know how this is going to play. Looks maybe slightly more turtly than the normal Wonder version, but we're going to go ahead and dive into this and see what it has to offer up. As far as the rankings go, we've got between 1,000 and 1,400. Pretty well balanced game. Let's introduce everybody, see where we go from here. On the north side, or the left side, or whatever this map is divided for, uh, we've got Salty taking Cybern in the air slot. Architect, Cybern as well, on the right flank. Then we've got Zero 108, he is taking UEF in the front. UEF for Illuminati as well. <laughs> that is a great name. And then the Pirate taking Aeon on the left flank. Matching him with Aeon on the south side is Mr. Banana. Another awesome nomiker. Moniker. Wow. Holy crap. That's a that's a bad slip. The Dead Sea taking Ion as well. And a third Aeon for sleep a lot. That is what I need to be doing because apparently my tongue is escaping from what it should be saying. No caps. Taking Cybern. And last but certainly not least, Motulal. 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 Whatever. Uh, he is taking UEF. I don't think I've... I, I'm trying to remember the last time I slipped up that badly, Nomaker. I think we should all start using this word as I just pronounced it, just so we can confuse people. Anywho, we've got two versus one ACUs on the front here. Two from the south side. That could potentially be a lethal situation if Blue is not too terribly careful here. Uh, I'm sorry, if purple is not too terribly careful, the two were from the north side. I'm confused on my colors as well. Um, yeah, but he is going to get out safely, leaving a bit of that mass for the north side to reclaim. Let's take a look at what poor little no caps got. 2,700, and zero has got about 500, and then 4,000 for Illuminati. So definitely, definitely an early reclaim advantage going to the north side team. It does look like there is going to be a further advantage because this little engineer is attempting, well, no, he is just kind of on move orders down there. I was about to say, if he can get up here and claim, that looks like a strap bomber and an ASF and two boulders up on top. That'll give him an awesome amount of mass to start this out with. I spy with my little eye a ghetto gunship. <clears throat> it does have one interceptor trailing forwards to protect it, and that guy is going to try to shred this base, and that is a beautiful thing to behold. It warms my heart with joy to see people using a ghetto gunship. It truly does. Let's just let's just admire the beauty here of the early T1 aggression, demolishing power generators, desecrating the homeland back in Gray's base. Looks like some heavy damage to that transport. Going to drop off all six flares, which will continue to damage the base. It'd be nice to pop that mass extractor 78% complete on a T2 upgrade. And the focus fire is not going to happen. There's the T2 finished on that. Healing up. And, well, that was a little bit disappointing, to be honest. If he could have gotten a little bit to the north, that could have turned out so much better. But you know what? We're going to give him a pass on it because he used a ghetto gunship, and that is awesome. Gray is really, really far forward. Not going to get into the base because we do have a point defense going down, which will throw a little bit of a wrench in the works there. So it looks like we've got uh, invasion of the T1 and ACU on this side and invasion of the flying flares on the north side. So well done on those guys exchanging blows tit for tat right at the beginning of the game. I don't think that's going to do anything to the end consequences, but it's always fun when stuff like that happens. We've got a drone building a factory ever so slightly faster than it is getting destroyed. Maybe he'll be able to get it up and get a tank out, but it's going to be a little bit sketchy because as soon as that drone stops building the factory, it is going to die because it only has a couple of hundred health on it. 
Looks like Air Control is strongly in favor of the North team, at least at this point. And these artillery in the back are still shredding some mass extractors. The pirate doing exceptionally well with what he's got. That is a third mass extractor going down. Tank is moving in to intercept, but he is going to get enough shots in the air to kill another and the power generator there. Oh, it's so close. And there's the shot. Well done. Three mass extractors and a power generator for that little run by in the rear there. Pirates is in a little bit of a mess here. He's in between yellow and turquoise. Dead Sea and Mr. Banana trying to get a two versus one kill there. But Pirate is going to be able to retreat into the safe arms of the Illuminati. For once, they're actually protecting people instead of taking over the world and destroying everything we all know and hold dear. Flares pinning off that ACU, trying to surround it. But you know what? When you're uh, one hit killing every single flare in sight and vetting up very rapidly, that's not really a good plan to carry forward with. I wonder what all those flares were built for. Not entirely sure. They were built in these factories to deny the other flares. That I do know. So this ACU is going to be pretty dang safe, sitting back here in the protection of all the triads and anti-air. Don't think there's any sniping that can happen there. And Mr. Banana down to about 1,500 health, moving off to the left. That is kind of a missed opportunity there. There are jesters in the back. Maybe he'll be able to score a kill on that ACU, but I'm not entirely sure. Run by on the right-hand side. Well done, Architect. Moving in and trying to do a little bit of extra damage, taking out a couple of mass extractors, but not doing too terribly much of a uh, not doing too terribly much damage to the back end there we do have an upgrade going down that is the t2 maybe or gun there's a drone there building it and i can't see what the expenditure is whether it's the seven or the nine we'll just have to check back in a moment to see what upgrade went down four land factories pumping out units for architect on the front line and a t2 upgrade in the back going to start pumping out some T2 units. Not sure, nope, it's not building. He got the T2 engineer up, he's getting power generators, he's getting tack defense, and not building any rhinos or vipers or anything else. I would highly recommend vipers. I always recommend vipers because vipers are awesome. T2 upgrade is complete on that ACU. That'll give him triads to build, turtling to do. I, I guess the turtle never sleeps on this version of Wonder because it looks like everyone is going for some form of point defense or uh, holding maneuver. Let's see here. The air player is doing reasonably well. He's capping off his mass extractors, building a T2P gen there, and streaming out a steady supply of interceptors between these three players on the north side. I think they have a firm grasp on air control. Nothing to be worried about there. That ACU up to 2700 health. I think sniping is kind of out of the question at this point which is a little sad if that had been moved on a little quicker. Might have had a dead commander, but it was not meant to be. So very, very sad. We've got even songs up on the front line here with uh, attack missile launchers going up under a stealth generator. That is sneaky, and I do love me some sneaky. Maybe we'll get to see an ACU attack snipe going down. T2 also on Zero's commander. He is gonna be able to fire at will on everything in front of his little makeshift firebase. It doesn't have a shield, so it's not a full-on firebase. He's gonna get radar up. Triad should be able to easily defeat Cerberus turrets. Very, very easily. They do cost more, but they are objectively better. Fire coming in on that ACU now. Gonna drive it back, gonna have to abandon all of his plans for that lovely little point defense creep. Matsulal. Matulau, Mutt, moving up just a little bit, and he is going to have to fall back in the face of all of those triads. So Tank's trying to move up on the left. Unfortunately, Aurora's streaming into Aurora's does not work very well, especially when said Aurora's... No, they don't have radar. I was about to say, they have radar, but I don't think they do. No, they do not. The health doesn't make a difference, though, because both of these guys have 140 health per tank. So there's not really an advantage to be had, and there's the tax snipe flying directly over engineers. That is a problem because he's going to see it coming, moving out of the way. Oh, that wouldn't have killed him anyway. 
one of those tank missiles impacted the front side of the power generator, that would have been a fail one way or the other. That's actually kind of a funny quinky dink right there. Salty yelling, get TMD to the TMD now, which is pretty much supposed to go unsaid, I would think, in just about all team games because someone somewhere will go attack launchers. It is only a matter of time. Resource allocation done, upgrading ARAS. That means we're gonna have a strong T3 air presence from this south side on the north. Are we seeing any kind of movement like that? He is capping off the remainder of his mexes. He's got the tier two air factory online. That looks like beetles to me. Will we get to see a beetle snipe? Woo hoo, buddy. This is getting more and more intriguing. Who is it going to be? Yellow is at 4,700 health, so he would be a prime target. Very, very likely to die and no anti-air in the area. But we do have a lot of swift winds, and that is going to be a problem because the swift winds can and will outrun that T2 transport. Maybe he'll be able to get stealth on it. That would be incredibly helpful as far as that drop is concerned. T2 gens going down for purple, not sure why he needs that much power. Well, no, he doesn't have much T1, not not too terribly much. Let's take a look at what his economy looks like, 740 income overflowing 171. So yeah, when he's dipping into the reclaim, he is stalling just a tiny little bit. So if he gets the T2 gen online, he could actually reclaim portions of his T1 power grid to get that mass back. The Viper spam is real over here. We've got six of them raining fire down on Matula's base, Matulal. I, that name is, I don't know what language that is from, but it is a brutal pronunciation hazard. Four fire beetles, which are about to get scouted. No, they are not. That was a nicely met scouting group, picking every single one of those out of the sky. And then anti-air, failing to kill it. He has scouted the fire beetles. He pulled the transport to the back to try to hide it. But um, yeah, they have been pinged. Everyone is aware that there are now fire beetles on the way. This, this, if he can pull this off, this is gonna be really nice. I'm not sure that he's going to be able to get anybody because if you know there's a fire beetle snipe coming, all you have to do is build a single flak. And that flak cannon will take out the fire beetles on the underside of the transport before it can land anywhere near your commander. If you're worried about your commander, build a couple of walls around and build one point defense and you should be completely and totally fine as far as fire beetles are concerned. And here we go, loading the transport. There is no stealth. That means... Yes, there is, right there. I'm a liar, don't listen to me. There's the stealth, so that is not going to be visible on radar. He should be able to get in reasonably well. There are ASF online, though, so the reaction time is going to be very, very quick for Sleep-A-Lot. Sir Sleep-A-Lot. Actually, these guys are from the same clan. Sir Sleep-A-Lot and Sir Salty. Sounds like, uh, sounds like Sutton's players, if I've ever heard them. And the Dead Sea. We can continue on with that. <laughs> All right, multiple transports, actually. We've got Auroras on T1 transports as well. I'm not entirely sure why, because I don't think that we'll be able to push forward with there. And let's see, we've got Oblivion Torch going down. We do have a Miasma Cannon, that is, versus a Clink Hammer. So pretty even fire bases on this side. This stealth drop going around the back side, it is on radar. Not anymore. It was for a second there. I'm not sure why either because, oh well, it is what it is. There's the drop. The ACU is in upgrade, so it is not going to be able to overcharge. Stop the upgrade, trying to move, and there goes the commander. Excellent, Fire Beetle Snipe, excellent. Another thing that warms my heart. Damn, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> We've got ghetto gunships, we got fire beetles, we got tack missile snipe attempts. What else are we gonna get here? Maybe we can get a donut by the end of it. If we can get a donut crash landing for a kill on an ACU, 
I think that uh, this game will be complete. It'll have everything. Aurora is going down to the ASF on that side. Sleep a lot has overwhelming air control. I mean, it is brutal. We've got T3 point vents going down on the right hand side, so the south is becoming a tougher and tougher nut to crack. That Ravager is going to be able to hold back the Viper spam. It's pretty much exactly what these guys needed. What do we got? What do we got? T3 Air is online, so we've got four ASF out so far. Corsair is moving towards the south and looping back in. That is a futile effort because ASF are going to absolutely demolish that. No contest. Throwing all the interceptors away as well. Ugh, not entirely sure that was a good idea. Interceptors can actually be fairly useful. Um, they do put out a good amount of damage. The only problem with them is that they're so freaking slow. But, if you're at a disadvantage in air, moving into the T3 stage, you need to keep those interceptors online as long as possible because they will give you some denial. Um, you can use your ASF to micro with the enemy clump and just kind of park your interceptors in the general area and you'll be able to kill off a few ASF with their back turned with the interceptor clump. It is, it is useful. It's not awesome, but it is useful. Oh! Holy crap, there's the donut. There is the donut. I did not know that that was building. I don't think it was building when I made that comment. Apparently these guys are psychic. They know exactly what I want. Trebuchets trying to deal a little bit of damage here, but the Viper spam is so very real. There's, let's, let's get a count on these things. How many has Architect got? 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 Vipers. Oh, oh, oh. T2 gun, or not T2 gunship, T2 transport. Dropping off some engineers out here to do a little bit of reclaim, a little bit of mechs building. Always want to get that accomplished. <clears throat> the eco is pretty strong on this side. Not uh, overwhelmingly so, but with the help of this reclaim over here, he is going to be able to get that czar up reasonably quickly. That brick going... One versus all out on the front, taking triad fire, eliminating all of those vipers. That is, that is bad. Should have moved those back, buddy. Or moved your brick forward, one or the other. That was a little bit of a fail. There's the ping. Sam's now. All to the ready. There is a donut on the loose, folks. <laughs> All right, we've got a attack launcher there. It's got a couple of kills on it. The bricks and T2 spam moving in. This pincer is actually kind of dangerous. Already killed off several mechs in the back between that attack launcher and this little push here. If that ACU does not have overcharge, which I don't think he does, there's no power storage, this could potentially be lethal. I mean, he could very well kill a commander here. There is a Percival standing in the way, though. The mighty Percival guarding his ACU. I think that guy will be fine. Commander's not in any trouble. What am I thinking? Sniper bots on the outside edge here. And we do have Titans whipping around to the back. Typically, Titans are not that great of a unit. But hey, when you can use their speed to get into an area that does not have any other defenses then they do deal enough damage to wipe everything out. ASAP. Harbinger coming out. Czar is on the move. Where are we going? Looks like he is headed for blue. Up for Architect and Zero. Well, like I said before, the air control is real. And ASF or Red are going to move in. Not going to do enough damage though. 25,000 health left on that Czar. Coming down and then Vet bringing it back up. We've got 17,000. Again, deja vu. 17,000 health there. And then that Czar is going to move north. Probably going to get Architect as well. This is not good. Not good at all. Two commanders going down. Cougars moving up. That is helpful. 
Hopefully they'll be able to lay down some fire on this. Czar is passing. No, they were headed directly for the Czar instead of north to cut it off. This is... Ooh, 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 ooh. Red running. He does have a bunch of Sams, though, that will be able to drop the Czar. But is it going to kill the Calm? And it's down. The Crash connecting with the ACU, but not enough to kill it. Well, I almost, almost got my wish. Maroon lost almost the entirety of his Air Force. Five ASF left to his name. And now there is a big chunk of reclaim hanging out in Salty's base. This is going to give him a tremendous leg up, potentially. Sniper bot spam coming out from Pirate. Just loads and loads of snipers. This is probably going to break the base, actually. I would love to see an Absolver. Like, if he had thought to put an Absolver up there. I saw this conversation on the forum the other day uh, about underused units and people wanting to buff the Absolver because it never gets used. Well, a unit not getting used does not necessarily mean that it needs a buff. It may just mean that people don't realize how useful it is. And I can tell you, <clears throat> Absolvers do a ludicrously good job of downing shields. Even commander shields, we're talking thousands of DPS versus shields, only three DPS versus actual targets. So if you get four or five absolvers out, you can eat a fire base alive with absolver fire because the shields cannot stand up to it. It is a very powerful unit that is just tremendously underappreciated. And I would encourage you guys, if you play Aeon, to try using it, even pairing it up with these sniper bots, because you'll be able to break the shielded targets and more effectively use the damage that your sniper bots are putting out. Four Cerberus turrets down. That is slowly but surely going to eat away at the Percival's health. Cerberus turrets, of course, the weakest of the faction's turrets, but it is enough to get the job done if you have enough of them. People are going to turn around, kill off those two Percivals, and uh, that is going to put it very close to a veterancy. Might be able to get some things done if it moves up to the north. What's worrisome for me here is that we have a Galactic Colossus online, and all Pirate has is Sniper Bots. We've got a couple of Percivals, not very many, a couple of Titans, and three Clink Hammers is pretty much all the defense that we have versus that GC. Well, there are two Miasmas there as well. Two, G's, two clink hammers and two miasmas versus a galactic colossus. But he is going to get back into the base. Not going to go up against all that firepower, I reckon. Sniper bots moving up. As long as he kites with them, they have a chance. They do deal tremendous amounts of damage from well out of the reach of a galactic colossus. It's just a matter of microwing. The sniper bots do fire while they're on the move they just have reduced accuracy two sniper bots and a t3 mobile missile or mobile anti-air rather lost to that gc two more sniper bots but you can see how quickly the health is coming away the gc is a big enough target that almost all of the shots connect even with the reduced accuracy and long range man it takes some time, it takes some patience, but sniper boats truly do save the day on occasion. That monkey lord cleaning up the remaining units up there. And GC trying to get something done. Sniper bot going down two, three. You don't want to vet it. 71 out of 90. If you vet it, you're dead. That's actually a pretty dang mass efficient kill there. And the GC is down to sniper bot fire I think that was six or seven um, snipers lost and killed a galactic colossus so it looks kinda weird I'm not exactly going to condone it as a good choice but it's working in this situation and that micro is helping sniper bots gonna have to deal with another galactic colossus at this point he actually needs to focus on well, I wouldn't even say T3 Mobile Artillery, although that will work. Um, I would go for Harbingers, because the Harbingers will be able to easily run down the Sniper Bots. 
be able to wipe them out no problem whatsoever. They only have a little over 400 health a piece, under 500 anyway, 450. Um, ooh, one going down there. So there are, there's a variety of ways to deal with this sniper bot problem, but man, are they effective versus one big clunky unit. Strap Bomber coming in, trying to kill some off, but a little bit of micro helping out with that. Those Serenities making their mark. You can see the damage over time where they connect and then they deal damage to that location over the next few seconds. Not really much of an effect when they don't hit anything. But yeah, they are very effective artillery, high damage units. Oh, T3 power generator going to go down. Maybe. Maybe. Come on, you can do it. One more shot would have killed it. Good lord. I'm going to lose a couple of sniper bots there. 41 out of 90 vet. Percivals are going to move into range, delivering a couple of more blows. We've got 59 out of 90. Vetting. Vetting. This is going to be really frustrating if that thing survives because of veterancy. We do have a Megalith and a Monkey Lord moving down on the north. So, ooh, one vet in the bag, and now the GC has made contact, ripping through the ranks of those sniper bots. See, that's the bad thing. They cannot survive any confrontation. The lightest tap from a T4 will kill those things. A fat boy coming in. Spider and Megalith moving forward. I think we're about to see a dead ACU, although that's, uh, that Ravager fire is pretty hard on the lifespan of a Monkey Lord. T3 PGen going down. Nice solid kill as far as uh, targeting priority goes. And those Ravagers are going to go down without taking down the Monkey Lord, I think. If these guys paired up and each overcharged once, that is a dead Monkey Lord. But... Oh, right before death, purple going down. I thought for sure when that donut came up that the entire North team was dead. But as it turns out, some brilliant maneuvering with the sniper bots over here and the rest of the team sticking together, these guys are not in that bad of a shape. Quite impressive, actually. There is a nuke, though. That is a problem. If these guys can survive long enough to launch that nuke, this could be a roll reversal. And a megalith coming from air. ACU sitting in the back. There is nuke defense, and it is almost loaded. Ooh, overflowing mass. Don't look at that. Don't look at it. It'll burn your eyes. <laughs> megalith moving south eliminating that Galactic Colossus, which I think is the only thing standing between them and this team. The nuke is almost done. Almost done and complete. Where are you going to launch it, buddy? Need to kill White, I think, is primary target. Actually, you need to kill all three. If you kill White, the sniper bots and the megalith will kill you. If you kill Red, the fat boy and the sniper bots will kill you. And if you kill Gray, you got a fat boy and a megalith to deal with, which I think is the worst of all. There goes the P-Gen. No! It was opening up to launch the nuke. And it's down. No! All right. That is the end of it. They told me, the person that sent this to me did say that this desynced, but it did not affect the outcome of the game. So we're just going to hide that little message and watch the last little bit. Honestly, after taking a hit like that, I don't think that there's anything these guys can do to survive. Mercy's trying to come out of the factories. We got T2 Transport loading up at that ACU. And he'll get a drop in somewhere, but I don't think there's any damage. Nowhere near enough damage that that ACU can do. Well, Megalith is going to snatch that transport out from under the ACU. Well, I guess I'll go back and meet my fate. Of course, we could walk up to the... He could probably overcharge that to death with it turned away. Nope. It's like, well, I better turn around and refocus because I don't want to get killed while I'm not looking. <laughs> All right. Sleep a lot is down, and that just leaves Matalau. Motulau. Matalau.
the guy with the impronounceable name in English. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up, guys. It's gonna take a minute for this to clear out, but I wanted to give you a little heads up on turning in replays. I try to touch on this every once in a while so that you guys know the best and proper method. The easiest way for me to keep track of replays is if you email me the replay as an attachment. Um, if you've played a game and you want to save it, you go to the client, go to the replay vault, um, local replays, and you can look at the games there, find the one that you want, right click it and hit show in folder and it will sh take you to that exact replay. And you just attach that file, it's like a 56 kilobyte file. Just attach it to an email and send it to brinkoinsanity at gmail.com. Um, the link to that email address is in the description of this video and that is the best way to get me a replay. Occasionally, the ones in the vault that you can search by replay ID number are desynced or corrupted, and the older the replay is, the more likely it is that it is corrupted. And I just experience a lot of issues with that, and then, you know, trying to collect replays from the client is hard because if the client disconnects, I lose the PMs, you know, that kind of thing. So, safest, easiest way to get me a replay is to attach the file to an email, send it to me. I am always, always in need of replay, so don't even ask if I want it. Just send it over. I will look at it and maybe I'll cast it. We'll just have to see how the game goes. Alrighty, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.